ebony-clad menace of the deep. This villain has been a constant thorn in the side of the heroic king of Atlantis, best known as Aquaman. Obsessed with overthrowing the mysterious undersea kingdom of Atlantis, he committed an unthinkable crime against the legendary marine marvel, forever locking them in a blood feud. Get ready to dive deep, this is the story of, Black Manta. Real name David Hyde, as a child he was an abandoned orphan boy who struggled with mental disorders similar to autism. Left in Gotham City's infamous Arkham Asylum for treatment he was misdiagnosed and mistreated. Due to his condition the feeling of soft linens put him in agony while he found soothing comfort in being submerged in frigid cold water. At this time Hyde became aware of the seafaring superhero Aquaman. Instantly enchanted by a man who appeared to thrive underwater the boy became obsessed and wanted to be just like the hero. The asylum's medical staff would frequently subject Hyde to experimental neurological treatments. One such treatment appeared to effectively relieve his disorder allowing Hyde to think clearly. Though in his new lucid state Hyde was able to lash out violently against the asylum staff and escape, later the young Hyde would find himself at the ports of Baltimore where he enjoyed living near the sea. Unexpectedly he was abducted and imprisoned on a sea ship, used as forced labor, and frequently subjected to physical abuse. One day he saw Aquaman out at sea and attempted to signal the hero for help. Unfortunately he went unnoticed. Hyde was eventually forced to defend himself, killing one of his captors and finally escaping. After this Hyde grew to resent Aquaman. He blamed the hero for not saving him from much of the abuse he suffered. He was now obsessed with destroying Aquaman and overthrowing the undersea kingdom of Atlantis. Soon, Hyde would amass a stockpile of nautical weaponry all stowed in his Manta ship. He outfitted himself in a black wetsuit topped with a massive bug eyed helmet that allowed him to survive underwater, as well as fire laser blasts from the eyes. Now calling himself Black Manta, he descended into the ocean depths to battle the Atlantean king himself, Aquaman. Black Manta quickly became a menace to Aquaman. In one of his earliest schemes Black Manta was able to compromise the safety of all Atlantis. When a mysterious submarine attacked Atlantis, Aquaman confronted the sub, only to realize it was a trap when he was surrounded by Black Manta's attacking minions. With Aquaman distracted Black Manta was able to put his plan into action. Descending his Manta ship over the protective dome of Atlantis he released a harmful chemical compound into the aquatic atmosphere of the domed city. As an automatic defense the citizens activated massive release valves to drain all the water from the city. Though safe for the moment the Atlantean people were without the water they needed to survive. This was Black Manta's scheme to make Atlantis unlivable for its people, leaving them vulnerable and easy for him to overthrow. Though the Atlanteans had a contingency plan to use the emergency serum X to inoculate the citizens allowing them to breathe there for an extended period. With Atlantis safe Aquaman went to do battle with Black Manta. The hero asked his wife Mira to stay back and protect their son, baby Arthur. While alone Mira was caught off guard by the sudden appearance of the Manta ship. Mira attempted to defend herself unleashing her powers on the ship but it was not enough. Black Manta overwhelmed her by releasing an incapacitating chemical upon Mira then kidnapped baby Arthur. Upon waking. A grief-stricken Mira told Aquaman that Black Manta had kidnapped their son. Black Manta soon announced from his ship an ultimatum. Aquaman should surrender himself in exchange for the life of his son. Aquaman ventured out into the open water to meet Black Manta, and hand himself over. Just as Black Manta released baby Arthur, a new player entered this conflict. It was Aquaman's other nemesis, the villain Ocean Master. As Aquaman was being trapped by the Manta ship, Ocean Master intercepted capturing baby Arthur. Ocean Master wanted the pleasure of defeating Aquaman himself and stepped in to throw Black Manta's scheme off balance. 
furious with the interference Black Man to attack Ocean Master's ship leading to an all-out battle between the villains over who should get to kill Aquaman. As they fought Aquaman was able to free himself from his restraints. Meanwhile Black Manta and Ocean Master destroyed each other's ships. Escaping his Manta ship, Black Manta was confronted by the sight of Aquaman leaping toward him. Black Manta lifted his harpoon gun ready to strike Aquaman when at the last minute Ocean Master jumped in. Now in a fist fight with Ocean Master Black Manta was suddenly swept away with the villain in a powerful upward water current. This gave Aquaman a chance to recover his son and escape. After this Black Manta would go on to be a constant tormentor of Aquaman in his quest to overthrow Atlantis. Black Manta was able to raise a small army along the way to help execute his numerous schemes. It was when things took a sudden change in Aquaman's life that Black Manta would devastate the undersea hero. Aquaman's work as a crime fighter with the Justice League left the Atlantean people doubting his role as their king. Karshawn, a new political upstart, convinced the High Council of Atlantis to put the matter to a vote. After the vote it was settled, Aquaman was out as king and Karshawn asserted himself as a replacement. Aquaman did not learn of any of this until he returned from a crime-fighting adventure. Here Aquaman met Karshawn for the first time now sitting on his throne. After a tense exchange Karshawn explained that he was now king and that Aquaman must respect that or be banished from Atlantis forever. Aquaman begrudgingly accepted this change in Atlantean leadership. Soon after this Aquaman was accused of stealing special Atlantean technology. The hero was then confronted by Atlantean royal guards and chased out of the city. Karshawn used this situation as a pretense to effectively banish Aquaman from Atlantis. Now exiled from his former kingdom Aquaman took his family and relocated to a secret base on the outskirts of the undersea civilization. Aquaman would soon try to contact his protege and best friend Aqualad and warn him of all that had transpired, fearing the young man would receive similar treatment. As it turned out Aqualad and his girlfriend Aquagirl were on an undercover mission tracking a diamond smuggling operation. After accidentally getting exposed Aqualad got into a fight with the criminals behind the operation. When Aqualad was overpowered and restrained the mastermind behind the operation presented himself. It was Black Manta. Aquaman decided to try and search for Aqualad himself and managed to track him down. Aquaman was able to team up with Aquagirl and make short work of Black Manta's henchmen and free Aqualad. Aquaman was then able to face Black Manta in direct combat. During their battle Black Manta mocked Aquaman for his recent and unceremonious dethroning. Aquaman was perplexed as to how Black Manta knew anything about this. With Aqualad's help Aquaman was able to beat Black Manta into submission. Black Manta was able to narrowly escape through a secret hatch and made his way to his Manta ship. Afterward Aquaman was now certain there must be a connection between Black Manta and Karshawn when he found weaponry in Black Manta's stash similar to those of Karshawn's guards. Aquaman's suspicions were correct. Black Manta and Karshawn were working together to torment Aquaman. While Aquaman was away, Karshawn had his wife, Mira and son, baby Arthur kidnapped. Upon returning to his secret lair Aquaman discovered Mira and Arthur missing. Agonizing over the obvious signs of a struggle Aquaman was suddenly confronted by Black Manta. Furious by Black Manta's disrespect Aquaman attacked him with a vengeance. Aquaman was caught off guard when Black Manta unleashed a laser blast from his helmet. Aquaman blacked out from the attack and awoke, locked in an Atlantean dungeon. At the same time Karshawn and Black Manta finalized the details of their collaboration. As Black Manta had delivered Aquaman to Karshawn he received a special map to a hidden Atlantean city in exchange. With that Black Manta left, Aquaman would later escape captivity with the help of Aqualad and free his wife and son. Karshawn would later be exposed as a mutated shark monster in disguise with a grudge against the Justice League. This all led to a climactic battle where Aquaman finally defeated Karshawn and left the throne to his ally, the wise Atlantean scientist Volko. The special map Black Manta received, led to a hidden undersea city populated by the lost Atlantean tribe known as the Idol Lists. 
Aquaman's protege, Aqualad, realized he had a connection to this tribe and went out in search for the hidden city. Meanwhile back at Aquaman's secret lair, Topo, Aquaman's faithful octopus pet feared that Aqualad may be in trouble. Topo abducted baby Arthur with the hope that Aquaman would follow him to help Aqualad. As he followed Aquaman encountered several idolists who sought out Aquaman on behalf of Aqualad. Aquaman realized that Topo's trail led him directly to the idolists' hidden city. Upon arrival Aquaman was attacked by henchmen clad in dark scuba gear. Aquaman was overpowered and lost consciousness. He awoke locked in a dungeon with Aqualad. Here, he learned that the Idolists were a tribe of committed pacifists and now had been taken over by a force of invaders. Aquaman was confused. Who could have been responsible for his capture? Aquaman got his answer as Black Manta entered the dungeon. Black Manta expressed his frustration with Aquaman as he felt the hero was interfering with his meticulous plan. Black Manta explained that he intended to make the Idolists' hidden city his base for his new undersea empire. He wanted to make the city's people his personal army, but their strict pacifist nature was an obstacle to that end. He went on to explain he made up for this by finding willing recruits in his people. Aquaman was confused as he thought Black Manta meant surface dwellers. Black Manta clarified his meaning by removing his helmet, exposing his face for the first time. Revealing he was Black Manta in more than just name. Black Manta revealed that he and his henchmen were all black men and that he intended to make undersea civilization a safe haven for black people. Aquaman was overwhelmed by all of this information and fought off his captors and managed to escape. Black Manta and his henchmen chased after him. The hero was cornered in a laboratory where Black Manta proudly boasted that he was experimenting with artificial human gill implants for the expansion of his empire. Aquaman tried to use one of the high-powered medical lasers as a weapon against Black Manta, but the villain revealed that he held baby Arthur and Topo hostage. Now with Aquaman under his control Black Manta moved forward with a demented scheme. He forced Aquaman and Aqualad into an arena demanding they do battle with each other. While at the same time baby Arthur was encased in a globe of oxygen that was slowly suffocating him. He would only spare the baby if one of the heroes killed the other in dual combat. Aqualad refused to fight and tried to flee the arena, but was literally shocked to discover a maintained force field to prevent escape. Black Manta then commanded for the fight to start. Aqualad turned to see a stern-faced Aquaman advancing upon him. The young hero was heartbroken to see his mentor and best friend bearing down on him menacingly, prepared to fight. It was now kill or be killed for the heroic duo, as Black Manta looked on in amusement. During the fight Aquaman accidentally caused a malfunction in the arena's force field. He saw an opportunity and was able to send a message to Topo to break free of his restraints and destroy the force field controller, while Black Manta was distracted. Aquaman then held his trident at Arthur's globe prison freeing him. Not prepared to face both Aquaman and Aquila together. Black Manta fled, and caused a landslide that nearly crushed the Idolists. After saving the Idolists Aquaman went to retrieve his son. But alas baby Arthur was dead. Overcome with grief and rage Aquaman was ready to hunt down Black Manta. He turned to Aqualad for help but the young protege was so traumatized by their fight that he refused. Disappointed Aquaman took off after Black Manta, alone. Aquaman stalked Black Manta to a sunken ship graveyard. Black Manta's henchmen were ready for Aquaman's arrival and shot at him on sight. The hero called upon marine life to attack the scuba-clad warriors quickly defeating them. Black Manta, watching the battle remotely, was furious at the incompetence of his henchmen. By Black Manta's side was his deputy, Cal Durham. Durham overheard Black Man to exclaim regret for not killing Aquaman sooner. Hearing this, Durham grew doubtful of Black Manta's true motivation. Durham worked with Black Manta because he believed in the cause of helping black people. Hearing Black Manta obsess over Aquaman, Durham became regretful. Black Manta then openly confessed that the only people he was concerned about were the ones he paid for loyalty. Durham felt betrayed. 
he reminded Black Manta of how committed he was, so much so that he was the first to volunteer for the artificial gill implant surgery. Now knowing the truth Durham wanted to completely disassociate himself from Black Manta. Black Manta then made it very clear that desertion was not an option. Meanwhile Aquaman fought through a fleet of Black Manta's robot drone attack fish. Then he broke through the hull of Black Manta's base to be confronted by Black Manta and his henchmen. Now faced with his enemy Aquaman furiously leapt for Black Manta. The ebony-clad villain was ready with an electric field trap knocking Aquaman unconscious. Ready to finish off Aquaman Black Manta was faced with a double cross. Durham held Black Manta at gunpoint reiterating his disapproval with Black Manta's murderous tendencies. Though Black Manta quickly had Durham subdued by his other henchmen, stuffed in a torpedo tube, and launched into the ocean. Meanwhile Aquaman awoke to find himself tied to a catapult launcher. Black Manta bragged that he intended to launch Aquaman into a grid of live exploding naval mines. As Black Manta gloated he did not notice his henchmen being attacked and tossed aside. Finished with his explanation Black Manta launched Aquaman toward the naval mines. Suddenly a laser beam struck Aquaman's restraints freeing him moments before the mines exploded. It was Gal Durham. The gill implants activated and saved him allowing him to breathe underwater. Furious for Durham's interference Black Manta moved to attack Durham, then suddenly Aquaman swept in and was upon Black Manta. Overpowered by grief and rage Aquaman was ready to exact vengeance for his son and kill Black Manta. Then suddenly the vulnerable Black Manta begged Aquaman for mercy. The deep sea hero was instantly affected by Black Manta's plea and reluctantly released his grip on the villain. Aquaman, with Durham's help was able to gather Black Manta and his gang and turn them over to Navy authorities. Black Manta would go on to serve an extensive prison sentence. After this Aquaman's marriage would suffer. Mira was furious to discover that while she attempted to find a way to revive her son, Aquaman allowed Black Manta to live when he had a chance to kill him. Moreover Aquaman struggled with the loss of his son and to cope he allowed himself to be consumed by his duties with the Justice League, even becoming team leader. Mira felt alienated from her husband as she struggled with her own grief. Mira ultimately decided to leave Aquaman. Years later Black Manta would reappear as a menace to the hero Captain Atom. While enjoying a seafaring vacation with his family, he became aware of Black Manta scavenging in the same area his family was in. Captain Atom and his son descended into the sea to investigate. They soon found Black Manta's ship and were captured and taken to his undersea hideout. Black Manta had the hero and his son thrown into an arena. The villain went on to brag about acquiring some alien technology and wanted to use it to attack Aquaman on the anniversary of baby Arthur's death. Now he wanted to test its effectiveness on his captors. Black Manta was not aware that he held the atomic-powered superhero captive. Activating his powers Captain Atom lashed out at the alien weapon destroying it. Captain Atom then chased down Black Manta overpowering him. After this encounter Captain Atom handed the villain over to the Coast Guard. Sometime later Atlantis was in a military conflict with the country of Homeland. Atlantis had taken a serious hit from the Homeland military as they managed to destroy the Atlantis capital's protective dome. The newest Atlantean king resorted to asking Aquaman for help defending the Undersea Kingdom, as well as representing Atlantis at the United Nations. Reluctantly Aquaman accepted. As it turned out Black Manta had a hand in the recent diplomatic conflict to Atlantis was involved in, which further destabilized the situation. During Aquaman's first United Nations speech he was interrupted by Black Manta. The villain taunted Aquaman, asking about the health of his wife and son. Aquaman flew into a rage and jumped into the sea after Black Manta. Quickly swimming after the villain, Aquaman was confronted by a horrible sight. Black Manta had destroyed the monument Aquaman had built to his dead son. This was the final insult, Aquaman was now determined to finally kill Black Manta. Restless and enraged by Black Manta's constant torment in his life, Aquaman rushed to the Manta ship to face the villain again. 
As the hero skillfully dodged the Manta ship's weaponry he was overwhelmed by memories of the devastation Black Manta had brought into his life. The murder of his son, Aquila losing trust in him, his wife Mary abandoning him, it was all Black Manta's fault with his obsessive meddling. Aquaman called upon whales to thrash the Manta ship and with the element of surprise on his side he was able to tear his way inside. Finally face to face the two deep sea warriors began their death match. In their battle Black Manta started to babble about his hatred for Aquaman. He said he did not think Aquaman deserved his family and Mira left him because she realized he was not man enough to care for her. A sneaky Black Manta was able to suddenly stab the emotionally volatile Aquaman. He left the hero for dead escaping the Manta ship. Aquaman survived but was weak. He used his power to call upon fish to swarm Black Manta and damage his undersea suit. Now rapidly losing air and too far from the sea surface Black Manta appeared to drown. Though Black Manta survived. Sometime after this encounter the villain came in contact with the demon sorcerer, Neron. Neron offered to grant Black Manta incredible power in exchange for his soul. Accepting the arrangement Black Manta was transformed into a Manta hybrid monster. Now he had no use for breathing equipment while underwater. Black Manta was a true terror of the deep, super strong, armed with razor sharp wrist talons and an electric charged spiked tail. Black Manta next faced Aquaman when the hero was on a rescue mission. Black Manta held Aquaman's friend captive in an undersea trench cave. Upon first seeing Black Manta, Aquaman was shocked by his old enemy's new appearance. Still vengeful Aquaman was ready to battle this very different Black Manta. Though ready to face him Aquaman was caught off guard by Black Manta's new powers. As the fight raged on Black Manta recruited a sea monster under his control to attack Aquaman. Aquaman killed the monster by stabbing it to death. But the monster's dead body dragged Aquaman into the sea depths. Black Manta looked on satisfied to see Aquaman descend into darkness. At the last minute Aquaman launched his cyber hook and entangled Black Manta in its cable, dragging the villain down with him to the bottom of the sea trench. After gaining their wits they immediately started to battle again. In the fight Aquaman was able to cut the tip of Black Manta's tail causing him terrible pain. Aquaman now had the upper hand in the fight and cornered Black Manta and was ready to kill him. They were suddenly distracted by a strange voice calling out to them. The two chose to investigate and discovered a massive deep sea organism. This was a millennia old creature that wanted to make contact with other life forms by force if necessary. The creature tied Manta up in its many tentacles and aimed to next take Aquaman. As Black Manta cried out to Aquaman for help the hero used his telepathic powers in high concentration defending himself against the creature. Aquaman escaped, leaving Black Manta to fend for himself. Black Manta would return to confront Aquaman and his friend Tempest, formerly the teen superhero Aquilad. The two heroes were on a mystical quest in Europe fighting the eerie villain known as the Thirst. While hunting down the Thirst the Manta ship suddenly appeared. Black Manta had been obsessively searching for Aquaman still determined to kill the hero. Seeing Black Manta again revived a rage in Aquaman so great that he diverted from his mission with Tempest to confront his old enemy. Jumping on the Manta ship Aquaman proclaimed he was determined to get revenge for his son. Beating the villain with his bare hands the ship lost altitude and crashed. Rising from the rubble Aquaman carried a severely beaten Black Manta to land. Removing the bug-eyed helmet exposing the villain's monstrous visage, Aquaman was ready to finally kill him. Though Tempest convinced Aquaman that he was better than exacting cruel vengeance. Moved by his friend's words Aquaman used his recently acquired magical powers to undo the sorcery that transformed him into the Manta monster. Using his own magic and telepathy Aquaman returned the villain to his human self while curing his mental affliction. In the process Aquaman was touched by Black Manta's childhood trauma and sympathized with his pain. Black Manta awoke with a brand new clarity his mental dysfunction seemingly cured. The renewed Black Manta was grateful for Aquaman's help and offered to assist the hero on his battle against the villainous thirst. 
Riding in the Manta ship they followed the first to the Australian outback. While traveling Black Manta confessed to Agriman he now deeply regretted the pain he caused the hero in the past. He also expressed how grateful he was that Aquaman saved his life. Aquaman was willing to give Black Manta a chance to be his ally. Soon the Manta ship encountered the first on his magic pirate ship. The two vessels were quickly locked in battle. Next the first used his powers to open a gateway to another dimension. Aquaman had to follow without Manta to fight the first head on. While on the other side Aquaman faced the thirst alone but was unsuccessful in preventing the villain from building his power. Escaping the dimension, Aquaman wound up back in the Australian desert alone. Wandering around in the hot sun Aquaman was certain Black Manta betrayed him, abandoning him to die in the desert. Rapidly dehydrated Aquaman passed out. At that moment the Manta ship descended from above and pulled Aquaman within. Once inside Black Manta doused Aquaman with water refreshing him. With that the hero felt certain that he could have faith in Black Manta as a trusted ally. As they moved forward the two new allies continued their hunt for the thirst traveling to the Middle East. They approached an ancient temple and descended within. They found the thirst about to attack an ancient goddess. Aquaman confronted the thirst and was able to overpower him. Though to Aquaman's horror when he called out to Black Manta for support Black Manta responded by shooting him in the back. Falling to the ground Aquaman asked him, why? Black Manta admitted, it was all a sham. Despite effectively healing his mental illness Black Manta still held a terrible grudge and hatred for Aquaman. Black Manta saw this as the perfect opportunity to do away with the hero for good. Frustrated Aquaman lashed out at Black Manta tossing him aside. Aquaman then attacked the thirst merging their powers sending them both into another dimension to finish their fight. After this, the now wounded Black Manta escaped. Later Black Manta resurfaced at a time when Aquaman ended his association with Atlantis and acted as guardian of the new undersea state of Sub Diego. This new region was populated by American citizens who were genetically altered to only breathe water. Black Manta saw this as an opportunity to undermine Aquaman's leadership as well as confront the hero. Sub Diego's population contained the black minority. Black Manta arrived in Sub Diego presenting himself as an advocate to its black population pointing out their lack of representation in the undersea city. When Aquaman discovered this, he attacked the villain in a fit of rage. Prepared to unleash a vengeful brutality upon Black Manta, Aquaman was interrupted by the black citizens of Sub Diego. The people were critical of Aquaman's attacking the villain as they thought Black Manta had their best interest at heart. An exacerbated Aquaman tried to convince the people that Black Manta was a terrorist who killed his son. In the confusion Black Manta escaped though he would soon return. Black Manta would next submit himself to a genetic alteration process, so that he could finally breathe underwater. It was successful. Now Black Manta gathered his henchmen and prepared to make his next move. Meanwhile Sub Diego had gone through some major changes. Atlantis had recently been destroyed by a vengeful spirit, and all of its survivors sought refuge in Sub Diego. With Aquaman in such a stressful situation Black Manta found this as a perfect opportunity to strike. As the destruction of Atlantis had been triggered by an excess use of magic, the Atlantean refugees in Sub Diego developed a hatred for magic users. A depowered Atlantean sorcerer had been the target of mob violence. The sorcerer attempted to escape to the outskirts of the city, where he was approached by Black Manta. Black Manta provided the sorcerer with new weaponry to get revenge against his attackers. Controlling the weapons remotely Black Manta's henchmen used too much power, causing the sorcerer to nearly kill one of Aquaman's allies. Aquaman arrived instantly. The sorcerer was terrified to face Aquaman, and confessed that Black Manta gave him the weapons. With that Black Manta triggered a self-destruct on the weapons, appearing to kill the sorcerer. Aquaman then hunted down Black Manta for another head-to-head -head battle. Tearing into the Manta ship Aquaman pulled the villain into the open sea. 
Black Manta's scuba henchmen attempted to follow but Aquaman commanded marine life to damage their scuba gear leading them to seek safety at the sea surface. Once again face to face Aquaman told Black Manta exactly what he thought of the villain. That he was a sociopathic killer no better than a sick animal. Black Manta gloated that despite Aquaman's rage he didn't have what it takes to kill. Then Aquaman called upon a swarm of vicious predatory sea life to surround Black Manta. Aquaman then abandoned the villain leaving him for dead. Black Manta would survive this fatal encounter by using an electrical jolt to evade the sea creatures. About a year later, a new Aquaman appeared, and the former was transformed into the mutated being known as, the Dweller of the Depths. While trying to mentor his successor the Dweller was killed in a battle. The hero was mourned by his friends and allies, and laid to rest in the ruins of Atlantis. Among the mourners was Gal Durham. He and the others needed to return to Sub Diego, and the new Aquaman chose to go with them. Upon arriving the group found that in a brief time Black Manta had not only returned but also taken over the undersea city. Black Manta laid the trap intending to get the attention of Aquaman. Though he was very disappointed to discover this new incarnation of the hero. Furious, Black Manta demanded the real Aquaman as he attacked the current Aquaman. Angered, this Aquaman returned the favor beating Black Manta to the ground. Black Manta then ordered his henchmen to attack Aquaman and his party. In all the commotion Aquaman and his friends fled into the surrounding city. After regrouping Aquaman and Durham set out to figure out how to investigate Black Manta's power structure. During their investigation they were attacked by Black Manta and his henchmen. Aquaman in frustration lashed out violently at them even killing one of Black Manta's henchmen. Black Manta then activated a powerful plasma weapon overwhelming Aquaman and Durham. With the two of them captured Black Manta wanted to collect samples of Aquaman's blood. When Aquaman asked what Black Manta wanted his blood for, Black Manta refused to tell him as he did not think he was worthy of an explanation since he did not consider him the real Aquaman. He went on to call the original Aquaman a coward for sending a stand-in. This Aquaman snapped at Black Manta telling him the reason the former Aquaman was not here was because he was dead. Black Manta was in shock. Durham assured Black Manta it was true. The villain was furious as he wanted the pleasure of killing the hero himself. Still angry Black Manta prepared the captive Aquaman and Durham for a public execution by plasma cannon in front of the citizens of Sub Diego. Before the killing blow could be shot Aquaman's allies created a diversion, giving Aquaman a chance to break himself and Durham free. Black Manta refused to lose, he hoisted up the cannon and prepared to shoot Aquaman and Durham. Then suddenly a shark appeared biting Black Manta's head. Activating the electrical charge from his suit Black Manta managed to escape the toothy grip. Swimming away in desperation he cursed aloud in pain that a shark had bitten off his face. Quickly, Black Manta gathered his troops and abandoned Sub Diego. Sometime later a Mr. Artifact emerged on Earth. The White Lantern of Life. This item released magical energy that resurrected many long dead heroes and villains, the original Aquaman was one of them. At this time Black Manta was revealed to be still living and healed from his previous injuries. He now lived a humble life working at a seaside fish market. It was at this time that he learned of Aquaman's resurrection on TV news. Upon hearing this Black Manta became enraged and attacked the fish market customers and left. Later that night he set fire to his own home and descended into the seat to reclaim his weaponry. Meanwhile the resurrected Aquaman had discovered something shocking from his wife Mira. She told the hero that she was from Zebo, an exiled undersea colony, and she was originally sent to Atlantis on a mission to kill Aquaman. Though after meeting him she fell in love with Aquaman and would marry him. What's more Black Manta may have actually killed their baby, Arthur, in revenge against Mira. As it turned out long before Black Manta ever met Aquaman he was a marine explorer. During an expedition in the Bermuda Triangle with his pregnant wife they were abducted by agents from Zebel. They were taken to Zebel and Black Manta's wife was the subject of extensive experiments. 
The purpose of the experiments was to alter the genes of her unborn child and grant him undersea powers like the people of Zebel. While Black Manta was able to escape his still captive wife gave birth to his son. The people of Zebel thought they could use this hybrid child as a means of freeing their people from Zebel. Black Manta's wife would later die. Mira would soon learn of the child's birth. By this time, choosing to live a more virtuous life, she traveled back to Zebel and kidnapped him. Feeling pity for the boy Mira reached out to a childless couple and asked them to adopt the child as their own son. The couple agreed and named him Jackson. Now that Jackson was a teenager, soldiers from Zebel were sent to the surface to retrieve him. The leader of the Zebel soldiers was Mira's sister, Siren. Aquaman was horrified to learn all of this and even more troubled that he may have to face Black Manta again. At the same time Siren arrived on the surface and approached Black Manta telling him that they needed to find his son. Meanwhile, Jackson's aquatic powers started to develop and his father admitted that he adopted him when he was a baby, and he was sorry for keeping the secret. Jackson's father then took him to a remote cabin. There he told the boy the entire story. His father then recovered a sealed coffer, that only Jackson could open. Before he could open it Black Manta appeared and attacked the two. In a panic Jackson and his father fled. Driving away Jackson's father felt the only way they could fight off Black Manta was if Jackson was exposed to water. Forcing the car over a cliff into the ocean Black Manta followed. Black Manta was caught off guard when he was struck by Jackson's incredible water power. Next Siren arrived. Furious, Jackson was ready to defend his father. Black Manta launched an arrow dart at the man. Suddenly Aquaman arrived saving Jackson's father. Seeing Black Manta again, Aquaman flew into a rage and the two enemies instantly revived their deadly grudge. In the violent battle Jackson and his father ran off until they found a local highway and waved down a truck. Aquaman's battle took him to the same stretch of highway where he regrouped with Jackson and his father. They got in the truck and left. Jackson was finally able to open the sealed coffer which contained a map leading to a secret cave containing special weapons meant for Jackson. As it turned out Jackson was critical in a coming undersea war that would consume the surface world. Aquaman convinced Jackson to embrace his powers as he could prevent the war from happening. Soon Siren was able to track down Aquaman. She was ready to start the war with the surface and brought a squad of Zeb L warriors with her. Fighting on a beach Aquaman and Jackson fought off the Zebel forces. Then Black Manta appeared descending upon Aquaman and chopped off his right hand. Jackson jumped in and stopped Black Manta from dropping the killing blow on Aquaman. Suddenly Mira arrived to help the fight. Aquaman had Jackson use his power to cauterize his wound. Then Mira used her water control power to sweep Black Manta and the Zebel warriors back into the sea. Aquaman called upon a swarm of marine life to surround them. Then Jackson's powers were activated. Aquaman told him to allow the power to flow out of him as he was activating an interdimensional rift. Once the rift was open Jackson was able to force Black Manta and all the Zebel warriors back where they came from. As the rift closed Black Manta swore he would escape and kill Jackson just like he killed baby Arthur. With that, the rift closed. Next DC Comics as a company went through a major transition which introduced an era known as the New 52. Many of DC Comics characters were reintroduced and reimagined in new ways. Here Black Manta was a mercenary and maritime treasure hunter. He had developed a notorious reputation and came to the attention of a Dr. Stephen Shin. Shin was a scientist who met Aquaman when he was a child. Aquaman's father asked Shin to help his young son deal with his developing powers. Shin was amazed by the young boy's abilities and studied him meticulously. When Shin contemplated going public with his findings about the young Aquaman his father became angry and refused to allow Shin to continue studying his son. Desperate to be able to continue his research Shin hired Black Manta to hunt down a then teenage Aquaman to collect a sample of his blood. When Black Manta confronted Aquaman his father defended him but suffered a heart attack he would die from a few days later. Aquaman, 
blaming Black Manta for his father's death, stalked him in revenge. Aquaman found Black Manta on his boat and attacked and killed him by breaking his neck. A moment later Aquaman was shocked to see Black Manta climb aboard the boat. The man he just murdered was Black Manta's father. With this Aquaman and Black Manta were forever locked in a cycle of vengeance. Years later Aquaman became acquainted with a group known only as the Others. They worked with Aquaman as a group of relic hunters. Aquaman and the Others found an ancient Atlantean ruin site that contained several powerful artifacts. Each member of the team took one of the different artifacts. After several years of working together the Others would disband. Now Black Manta had been hired by a mysterious client to hunt down Aquaman and his allies in the Others and steal their Atlantean artifacts. He would go on to try and kill the others due to his own vendetta after taking their artifacts. Though the ultimate kill for Black Manta was Aquaman. As Aquaman reassembled the remaining members of the others, they discovered that Black Manta was traveling to the Atlantean ruins where the others found their powerful artifacts. As it turned out there was another undiscovered artifact at the site, and it was more powerful than all of the discovered ones. Impatient Aquaman traveled to the ruins alone attempting to stop Black Manta from finding the remaining artifact. Arriving at the ruins Aquaman saw Black Manta and his henchmen in the process of excavating the site. The artifact was unearthed, it was a powerful scepter. Aquaman leapt into action attempting to capture the scepter. Black Manta quickly took the scepter and attempted to attack Aquaman with it. A single swing of the scepter caused the ruin site to shake. Aquaman was covered by rubble and Black Manta was upon Aquaman ready to strike. Suddenly the others arrived just in time to save Aquaman. A huge fight broke out between the others and Black Manta's henchmen. In all the commotion Black Manta was able to sneak up on Aquaman and try to attack him again. Aquaman's teammate, Vostok, jumped in the way to protect Aquaman receiving the blunt of Black Manta's attack, killing him. Black Manta and his henchmen fled the ruins. Devastated by the death of another friend Aquaman swore to kill Black Manta. Black Manta traveled to a rendezvous point to meet his client and deliver the scepter. He did not realize that Aquaman and the others tracked him down. Aquaman tried to steal back the scepter but Black Manta's client stole it back and escaped. Black Manta and Aquaman's team were left to face each other. Black Manta came close to killing another of the others, then Aquaman jumped in smashing open Black Manta's helmet. Aquaman then disarmed Black Manta and overpowered him. Black Manta realizing that he was defeated demanded Aquaman kill him. Now, tired of all the death, Aquaman refused. An enraged Black Manta screamed at Aquaman again to kill him now. Aquaman only responded, maybe someday, but not like this. After this Black Manta was apprehended and taken to prison. While in prison Black Manta was one of the many villains liberated by the villainous crime syndicate after the Justice League mysteriously disappeared. The crime syndicate wanted to rally together all active supervillains into a massive army in a bid for world conquest. The crime syndicate publicly proclaimed that the Justice League was dead. Disappointed by the idea that Aquaman had likely died with them, Black Manta abandoned the crime syndicate's gathering and went to visit his father's grave. While reconciling with his new circumstances crime syndicate member Ultram enforced a lunar eclipse by moving the moon in front of the sun. The sudden movement of the moon caused the nearby ocean tides to climb causing a tidal wave. The wave swept in and consumed Black Manta, while exhuming his father's grave, pulling the body into the sea. After the wave passed Black Manta surfaced donned his helmet and now felt he had a new purpose, to destroy the crime syndicate. Black Manta would go on to join forces with Lex Luthor and several other supervillains who sought to overthrow the crime syndicate. The villains would reluctantly collaborate with a renegade Batman to overthrow the crime syndicate and rescue the Justice League. With the return of the heroes Luthor's team disbanded and Black Manta returned to his treasure hunting and awaited a time when he could face Aquaman again. Soon Black Manta joined a new assemblage of the convict Black Ops government operatives known as the Suicide Squad. 
In the team's earliest adventures Black Manta was able to assert himself as team leader. This was a role he found easily frustrating as he spent much of the time trying to keep the team focused and from killing each other. During a mission in China, Black Manta revealed that unlike the other members of the Suicide Squad who were forced to join the team, Black Manta volunteered to become a member. In a discussion with teammate Captain Boomerang he detailed that during the brief time that he believed Aquaman was dead he felt he had nothing to live for. Occupying himself with the Suicide Squad allowed him to freely kill numerous mission targets and visualize that they were all Aquaman. Despite the little sense of purpose he got from working with the team Black Manta quickly found the Suicide Squad too disorganized to work with and unpredictable. He tried to negotiate a way off the team but was unsuccessful. On the next mission the squad was sent to infiltrate a terrorist cult known only as the League. The League maintained strict beliefs and living standards. The squad had to pretend to conform to the League's ideology in order to destroy them from within. Spending so much time among the League Black Manta admitted to his teammates that he started to appreciate their society. Next when Black Manta accompanied a League operative on a late night patrol they found the League's child recruits out playing. This was a huge problem as it was against the strict regimented schedule that the League had in place for their young trainees. As it turned out Suicide Squad member Captain Boomerang was behind this. He thought it would be fun for the children. The League was furious as they saw this as a corrupting activity. Black Manta was in agreement and attacked Captain Boomerang on behalf of the League. The Grateful League operatives asked Black Manta what punishment would be appropriate for Boomerang. Black Manta answered, Death. Black Manta appeared to have fully absorbed the League's ideology. He had also become very close to the League's leader and even saved the man's life during a mission. The League's leader showed Black Manta his ultimate weapon, a time bomb. This weapon could use explosions to send anything in its radius through the time stream. Later Black Manta met up with his Suicide Squad teammate, Deadshot. Black Manta mentioned that he spent the day with the League's leader and knew what his ultimate weapon was. Deadshot was glad to hear this and was ready to destroy it and end the mission. Black Manta admitted that he had no interest in stopping the League or leaving. He went on to admit he appreciated the collective anti-establishment nature of the League and felt their beliefs could solve a lot of the world's problems. An exasperated Deadshot could see Black Manta was just desperate for a sense of purpose in his life and was clinging to the League for their highly structured lifestyle. Though Black Manta did not see it that way. Later that same evening Black Manta went to the League leader and confessed that he was an operative from the United States sent to infiltrate and destroy the League and now he wanted forgiveness for his deception. Effectively abandoning his Suicide Squad teammates they were left to save Captain Boomerang from public execution themselves. Now working by the side of the League's leader Black Manta attempted to support the leader in his next move. Except the leader wanted Black Manta to publicly sacrifice himself on behalf of the League to show how serious they were about their intent to use the time bomb. Black Manta did not think his own death would be effective in this way as he felt he would be worth more to the League alive. The leader grew frustrated with Black Manta's lack of enthusiasm for self-sacrifice. Black Manta responded that he was too important to die. Angered by Black Manta's new streak of individualism and urge for self-preservation the leader told Black Manta he did not belong with the League. Black Manta reacted with frustration realizing the leader was not as in control of the situation as he claimed to be. After fighting the leader, Black Manta prepared to escape. Then he saw the leader activate the time bomb. Black Manta escaped to find the rest of the Suicide Squad fighting the League. Together they left the League's city while Suicide Squad member Reverse Flash disposed of the time bomb in the ocean, unfortunately he sacrificed himself in the process. After this mission Black Manta realized working with the Suicide Squad was not in his best interest. Soon after this the active managing directors of the Suicide Squad, Amanda Waller, and Victor Sage, started to disagree on how to operate the team. Sage wanted to ruin Waller and was willing to resort to sabotage to do it. 
Sage made a deal with Black Manta to release him from his commitment to the Suicide Squad if he helped him take Waller down. Black Manta agreed to work with Sage. Sage wanted Black Manta to deliver some incriminating data to a rival company that would expose Waller for breaking international laws through employing the use of the Suicide Squad. Waller quickly became aware of Sage's plot and brought her other Suicide Squad operatives to back her up. This led to a showdown where Black Manta was forced to fight his former teammates. Able to systematically overpower all of them he then got angry and attempted to kill Waller himself. At the last minute a struggling Deadshot was able to shoot Black Manta stopping his attack on Waller. With Sage's plan foiled Black Manta was taken back into custody. Next DC Comics introduced the Rebirth event. This event relaunched the world of DC Comics characters, refreshing their origins and backgrounds. Here Black Manta still sought revenge against Aquaman for murdering his father. Black Manta appeared again during an Atlantean diplomatic summit hosted by Aquaman and Mira. When an attending news reporter became sick, he was followed by a guard through the Atlantean embassy halls. As the guard looked to see if the reporter was alright he noticed an array of devices secured to the embassy walls. In truth the reporter was Black Manta in disguise, and the devices were bombs. Black Manta killed the guard and detonated the bombs destroying a huge portion of the Atlantean embassy, causing a flood. Mira used her powers to control the water, stopping the flooding. Aquaman went to investigate the situation. Suddenly Black Manta revealed himself and attacked Mira, causing her to lose control of her powers releasing the flood. Instantly Aquaman was upon Black Manta, reigniting their bloody feud. Aquaman attempted to reason with Black Manta, and argued that this cycle of violence was pointless. Black Manta refused to listen to Aquaman. Black Manta was not only determined to kill Aquaman but also humiliate him and publicly defame Atlantis. In the battle Aquaman gained the upper hand and considered killing his foe once and for all, hoping to end their fighting. Black Manta told Aquaman that if he killed him it go against Aquaman's ethics and he could no longer consider himself a hero. Aquaman conceded. Then Aquaman challenged Black Manta to kill him. He reasoned that Black Manta was so obsessed with vengeance for his father that he had no other purpose. If he could finally kill Aquaman, Black Manta would lose the one thing he actually cared about. Faced with this agonizing truth Black Manta cursed the hero and fell to his knees in surrender. Aquaman then told him that he missed his own father every day, and he was sorry for killing Black Manta's. Once again Black Manta was taken away by the authorities. This time Black Manta's prison transport truck was intercepted and he was released. He was met by a mysterious woman who called herself Black Jack. She was a representative of a secret criminal organization known as NEMO, Nautical Enforcement of Macrocosmic Order. This organization wanted to add Black Manta to their ranks as they felt his skills and knowledge of Aquaman and Atlantis could be beneficial to their goals. Nemo wanted to dominate the world through controlling the seas. Atlantis was an obstacle in this effort. Soon after this Aquaman and Mira traveled to Washington DC to meet with the president. While there, an American naval ship was attacked and sunk. The United States government was told that Atlantis had claimed responsibility for the attack leading to Aquaman being arrested. In truth Nemo arranged for the attack on the naval ship and blamed it on Atlantis. While incarcerated Aquaman began to speculate on the truth about the attack, then suddenly Mira arrived to break Aquaman out. She learned that a war was about to break out between Atlantis and the United States. Reluctantly Aquaman went with Mira and escaped. To their shock the US Army was waiting to face them. Taking on a massive military force as well as Superman himself, Aquaman and Mira had to fight their way back to Atlantis to prevent a war with the surface. Meanwhile Black Manta had been taken before the leader of Nemo, a man known by the title of Fisher King. Black Manta proposed that Fisher King change some of the objectives of Nemo so the organization could exert more control over the world. Fisher King rejected Black Manta's ideas explaining the villain was only brought in as an operative to serve Nemo, not affect the leadership. Black Manta refused to work as a servant, 
and with that killed the man in cold blood, tossing his body aside, and inserted himself as the new Fisher King of Nemo. Later Black Manta called a board meeting for all major members of Nemo to assert his new status as Fisher King. He told them he was ready to move on to the next step in his plan to destabilize Atlantis. Nemo next unleashed a terrible monster that tore a path of destruction across the ocean floor. As the monster approached an Atlantean colony, Aquaman and his royal military were on the scene and attacked the creature. Soon Aquaman and his defense forces realized that this monster was the super, adaptive Shaggy Man. This creature could adapt to most forms of force inflicted upon it and become stronger. Aquaman ordered his military to stop attacking so they could figure out a better way to stop the monster. It soon became apparent that the Shaggy Man was on a path for Aquaman's childhood home in Amnesty Bay, Massachusetts. Realizing that bringing his royal military with him to American shores would be seen as another act of military aggression from Atlantis, Aquaman was left to fight the Shaggy Man alone. While able to figure out the way to stop the Shaggy Man Aquaman suffered serious injuries and was admitted to the hospital. Aquaman's relentless defense of Amnesty Bay was seen on TV news across the country leading to the hero's celebration. Black Manta's plan backfired as Aquaman was able to use the attack to redeem his image. Black Manta was furious and was now ready to take extreme measures. He would use Nemo's resources for a false flag operation to trigger a war between the United States and Atlantis. He hoped to then get other nations involved causing an international disaster. In the global chaos Nemo would be able to step in and take control. One of Aquaman's allies who had connections to the military had become aware of the existence of Nemo and brought her information to the attention of Aquaman. Her description of the organization corresponded to the crisis that Atlantis was dealing with. This led Aquaman to start an investigation into Nemo to hopefully prove Atlantis was innocent of previously sinking the naval ship. Next an onslaught of Nemo forces claiming to be from Atlantis attacked several major American East Coast cities simultaneously. Black Manta ordered all his Nemo operatives to kill as many survivors as they could, while rampaging through the cities. Next the President of the United States declared war on Atlantis, while 70 world nations joined America in condemning the undersea empire. Black Manta's plan appeared to be a success. Now that to Atlantis was being held responsible for a war they never started Aquaman had to strategize a way to end the war while defending the undersea kingdom. At the same time Black Manta ordered Nemo to release a full assault on Atlantis. While fighting off the attack Aquaman was able to break into one of the attacking submarines. Once inside Aquaman confronted the sub's captain. Before Aquaman had a chance to fully interrogate him Black Manta used a long-range signal activating a self-destruct mechanism that killed the captain. Realizing what Nemo was willing to do to maintain their secrecy, Aquaman rushed to figure out a way to find Nemo's base of operations. With help from one of his technology experts Aquaman was able to track down Nemo's new headquarters. At that moment Black Manta was making plans to start more fake Atlantean wars in other parts of the world. Suddenly Aquaman broke into Nemo's base in a rage. Another vengeful battle broke out between the two. During this fight Black Manta asserted everything he did with Nemo was inspired by what Aquaman had told him previously. Aquaman was furious by the implication that this was somehow all his fault. Despite being found out, Black Manta still had to maintain the secrets of Nemo. After receiving a horrible thrashing from the Sea King, Black Manta activated a detonator that blew up the entire Nemo Sea ship headquarters. Surviving the blast, Aquaman never found Black Manta's body, but was able to recover his infamous helmet to prove Atlantis was not the instigator of the Sea Wars. Black Manta would later resurface continuing to appear as a constant menace to heroes throughout the world. Though he still maintains his blood feud with the undersea hero Aquaman. In other media Black Manta has appeared in numerous animated series as Aquaman's arch foe. This includes various incarnations on the Super Friends, Batman the Brave and the Bold, and other DC Comics animated movies.
In the Justice League animated series the character was renamed Devil Ray. Black Manta has also been featured in numerous DC Universe video games. In the 2018 live-action Aquaman feature film, Black Manta is portrayed by actor Yaya abdul -Mateen. Here he is depicted as a ruthless treasure-hunting pirate with a vengeful grudge against Aquaman, much like his more recent depictions. So what do you think? Were you surprised to find out he was actually black? What do you think of Black Manta's helmet design? How does Black Manta compare in the movies? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to share it, and please subscribe to this channel. Click the bell icon to be immediately notified of new releases. Until next time remember, this is the place to receive your regular, dynamic dosage.